family to the celebration of the life of our sister Muriel Vivian Cromwell. We are absolutely grateful for your presence and it is our plea that the God of peace will give us not only that peace but the comfort that comes along with it. For those of you who are here for the first time, there are rooms of convenience. Just as we go back in the foyer, you turn to the right, the immediate door on your right, that's a room of convenience. We have a couple of them downstairs as well. You won't miss them because those are clearly labeled male, female, or men, women, labels like that. 
But let's now begin celebrating the life of our dear sister. Every now and then, as we make our way through with this life, there are moments when we are given a chance to simply pose and reflect on what life means to us. This moment and this hour, we have that opportunity to make that reflection. Because death provides to us such an opportunity as that. Let's take an inventory of our life. Amen. As death provides us with that opportunity, we do well to actually look at the things that we no longer lay claim on. Because death reminds us we're not possessors of all. We are stewards of that which was given to us, and when it goes, it's gone. But we can determine what our real treasure is, and this moment will help us do that. So we are here now to pay tribute to our dear sister Nero, and if you are willing, it can also be a time to reflect upon our values, our habits, and what it is that we make our commitments to. Death is a great mystery, no doubt, and we'll ponder these mysteries together as we continue in the celebration of the life of our dear sister, Nira. At this point, I invite you to sing with us Holy Ground, one of those songs that we accepted our
time we are going to seek the helping hand of the God who alone can make this a truly <coughs> helpful time for us to begin to heal and to find him present in our difficult situation. I invite Reverend Gilles to lead us in prayer. Mm -hmm. So give my condolences to the family and we're thankful for Sister Muriel and we know where she is. Yes. 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 Psalm 27 reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in His Let us pray. Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are our light and our salvation. We enter into your presence in need of your sustaining love and grace today. We come carrying a burden of grief for the loss of our beloved sister, Muriel Crumlin, wife, mother, sister, grandmother, aunt, friend, neighbor. We thank you for her life and the blessing of knowing her. We carry an awareness of our own fragile mortality. Still, we thank you for the mystery of your presence among us today. Draw close to the family and all who love Sister Muriel. May your compassion be our comfort and your presence our strength. You are our hope even in the shadow of death. Be with us now. May the service cause us to give thanks for Sister Muriel's life and bring us peace because she is safe in your care. Comfort us, we pray, in the mighty name of Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Mills. One of the most comfortable things during times like this is to sing. And so we invite our sister Emma to sing for us at this time. After which, Reverend Wanda will come and read a portion of God's word to us. The healing word of God. Sister Emma.
Jesus holding out his hand yeah. and taking hers and leading her home. I want to begin by giving thanks to God just for this day. A day where we celebrate a beautiful, beautiful life. Known as Mrs. Muriel Vivian Cromwell, I want to thank you, Reverend Natalia and the family, for the invitation to participate as we celebrate her today. I want to bring condolences from myself and my husband, Alvin, but also from Reverend Wayne Desmond, who would have been here, but he is doing another service at this time. The deacons and executive of Cherry Brook United Baptist Church. How blessed am I that I have known Mrs. Cromwell for, I'm going to tell my age now, <laughs> 61 of almost 65 years, God willing. You see, I was one of her kindergarten children. And she called myself and my friend Shelly, who's here as well, her girls. And when God blessed me to come to Victoria Road, she looked at me and she said, the teacher is now going to be teached. <laughs> I've been so blessed. I know anyone that has been touched by her life, you have been blessed. Her children, her beloved husband. Oh, how God bless them both. To her siblings and all of her nieces and nephews who I know hold her so dear in their hearts. She's no longer with us physically, but now she resides in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Now it's up to us to meet her there. I have been asked to read the word of the Lord, which is always my privilege and my honor. I will be reading from the book of Acts, chapter 7, verses 54 to 60. For those that can stand for the word of the Lord, other than the family, I ask that you stand. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed at him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God, and said, Look! I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran at him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of the young man named Saul. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Bless the reading of the Holy Word of God today. God bless you. Great singing, you should say no Thank you, everyone. Wonder for that great reading of God's Word. I will ask now uh, one of uh, Sister Nero's nieces, Deacon Patrick, Patricia Gross, to come and read the obituary. After which, we will have Brother Fred, Fred Wilson, sing again. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Before I read the obituary, I would just like to share a few thoughts of Art Muriel. Art Muriel was a kind and gentle soul who was easy to love. We grossers can find something to laugh about at any time. And she maintained that trait <laughs> One day last week, she asked me something. Her voice was very low, 
I didn't, and I didn't want to keep asking her to repeat what she was saying. So I just answered her. And in just that instant, her voice went an octave higher. <laughs> and she said clearly to me, did you understand what I just said? <laughs> and I replied, you getting testy here? <laughs> and then we both laughed. We both laughed. So I just praise God for that. But I'm so ever thankful that during the times that we were alone together, that we were able to express our love for one another. And that I will cherish. Amen. So the obituary reads as follows. It is with heavy and saddened hearts that the family of Maria Cromwell announced her passing on Tuesday, March 19th at 5.20 p.m. Muriel passed away peacefully, surrounded by her family. She was born August 25th, 1933, to the late James Gross and Hannah Gross Sparks. Muriel is survived by her husband, Reverend Cromwell, her children, Deborah Ann Desmond, <coughs> Carolyn Marie, Peter <coughs> Dumbulin, and Douglas Gordon Desmond Jr. Sisters Velma Jean Shepherd, Gwyneth Flood, Maxine Arnold Sparks, Winston Carolyn Grove Sr., and David Rose, and an honorary brother, Gerald Beverly Clark. Survived by her grandchildren, Joy Desmond, Matthew Sarah Dumoulin, Chantel Colin Reed, Danielle Kevin Dumoulin, and special grandchildren, Sharenda States and Vincent States. She was also survived by several great grandchildren. Muriel was, active, <coughs> was an active member of her home church, Victoria Road United Baptist, and community. She served as president of the Ladies Auxiliary and Women's Missionary Society for many terms over the years. She served as Sunday school superintendent and Sunday school teacher. She sang in the choir in the church choir, mm -hmm. where she was often featured as a soloist leading mm -hmm. the special programs of the church. Muriel served as social convener and the church <coughs> welcome committee. Mm -hmm. Muriel had a love for music and yes. looked for opportunities to share her love for God yes. yes. through her music ministry. She was often sought out to perform at special events and had the opportunity to perform on the Nova Scotia. Muriel was a member of the African United Baptist Association, where she served on the executive at Sunday School Supervisor and the Women's Institute of the ABA. She was actively involved with the children, with the Dartmouth Christian women serving in various positions. In 1963, <coughs> Muriel was blessed to be one of the founding members of the Brunswick Street Preschool Health Bank, which was one of the first <coughs> integrated child care facilities in Halifax. Muriel served as one of the preschool teachers there as well. And not here, but Sister Muriel was also a member of the Women's Aglow of Dartmouth, and that was another Christian organization here in Dartmouth. She was predeceased by her parents, James <coughs> Rose and Hannah Rose Sparrows, and a brother, <coughs> Clyde Rose in infancy, Clyde Rose, Osley Rose, Helena Gray, and special granddaughter, <coughs> Ebony States. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yes. <coughs> I am not Fred Wilson, in case you didn't know. But because he's unable to be here today, I have agreed to try my best. Is there anybody besides me related here from Glasgow? Okay, my cousins, I just want you to know that first of all, on behalf of my family, the Williams family from Glasgow, but also our other family, I want you to know you've got my deepest sympathies. I want you to know that 
I played for Muriel on many, many occasions, and she gave me permission to call her Muriel. <laughs> Understand what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be disrespectful. But family, I want to thank you for even thinking about me and for including me at this time because the memories I've been living with, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to sing to a piece that uh, she sang on. I'm not going to sing it like she did because nobody can. But I ask you now just to close your eyes, you know, and start thinking about when you heard her singing. Mm -hmm. don't, don't think my voice is heard now, don't think that. But just think about the many times you've heard her singing, because you know you did. Oh yeah, I'm not the old girl. Okay? Oh. 
attachment to system neurons are part of the down to us. I couldn't see system mirror in the singing was good. <laughs> 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 I could see At this time, I'm going to invite her son, Dad, to come and do it. Thanks for coming. Um, Mom was a special lady. You know, she taught me so much. You know, I'm gonna miss 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 my mom, but you know what? She was a great teacher growing up. You know, when I was a young boy, I remember we used to sit around the table and we would have our prayer meeting, and it didn't matter what you did. You know, Mom used to say, if you had time to write to run the road, you have time to go to church. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, mom, you know? And she told it just like it was, you know. And uh, oh, 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 over the years, I always tried to make her proud, you know, of the things that I did, you know. Like, and, you know, and it gets to the point where uh, I look at it now. I'm very, very great, 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 great for for everything that she did for me. Uh, Christmas time was her favorite time of the year. You know what I mean? Growing up as a little boy, growing up in Montreal, you know, at Christmas time I had my cousins, Braddy and Ivan, you know, we would play hockey all day and mom would just keep the snacks coming in and <laughs> us happy, you know. Those those are special, special times, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Some families, you know, they don't get that, you know what I mean? Because people are holding on to grudges, you know? They're not. Have to leave the, we have to leave those grudges alone because I, that's the way mom, mom was. You know, you got to learn to turn the other cheek. Yeah. You know what I mean? The tongue is always mightier than the sword. <laughs> I, I had no problem coming up here this morning, you know. The ladies last night and today, Pat, you know, she... You guys said everything that I wanted to say. <laughs> so you know, but so all all I could do was go into where I was a young boy at Christmas time and you know, and she made things so special. Whatever group that she was a part of, she always sprinkled her seeds everywhere she went. And I tell you, those seeds grew because she was a part of every group, you know. Mm -hmm. And we are thankful for you guys having her because, you know, not everybody is wobbled. Right. But her, when she came, I tell you, she could come. And to hear her sing, the first time I heard my mom sing, I met the late uh, Billy Graham years ago at the Commons. And I remember my mom used to take me down there as a little boy all dressed up and she'd be going up there to say, And I always remember hearing my mom. And I tell you, she, she was special. And she was special to everybody. And I can say if my mom did anything or said anything to hurt anybody's feelings, the Lord has forgiven her. And she's oh, yeah. gone her way on. She's been ready for a long time. Oh, yes. You know, I can't call her up anymore and say, hey, colored girl, what, what are you doing? <laughs> 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 that's, that's the way I talk to my mom, you know? <laughs> and she was my coochie. <laughs> thought I couldn't do this, and I knew I could. <laughs> <laughs> I am my mom's 
Sunday. That's I right. came from good stock. That's right. And I will make her proud. She'll always yeah. be looking down on me and she'll know that I'm doing the right thing. such good care of Aunt Miriam. I have seen some clergy behind me. Are there any others in front? All right, let's have the clergy that are here rise so we can recognize them. Reverend Maxine Goff here, Reverend Wanda Lawrence, Reverend Cheryl Ann Bills, and our host pastor, Reverend Emmanuel. Thank you. Thank you. So great to be able to come and be part of this beautiful celebration of life for Aunt Miriam. And I am so glad to see a strong home contingent. Look at Cherrybrook in the house. <laughs> Complete with her honor, the Minister of African Affairs and Public Service Commission, the Honorable Twala Gross. We give thanks to God for your continued work among us. Amen. Thank you. Everyone else from other communities and churches. That's part of the strength of the African United Baptist Association. And for the people loving Aunt Muriel, it is so wonderful that we have this very, very strong contingent to send her home today. I came to Victoria Road 26 years ago. Aunt Muriel was a vibrant, feisty, 64-year-old senior citizen. We bonded from the beginning, and as the duration of my pastorate stretched out, I had opportunities to visit and minister to her and Brother Irvin Cromwell and the whole family. She took great interest in our growing little children and really becoming a wonderful family friend as a result. She was a strong contributor to our ministry with volunteer service for events, just to name a few. And you've heard a lot about the singing already and her work in the association from the obituary. And I was particularly blessed by her singing ministry. My favorite song from her selections was The Holy City, Jerusalem. In a moment, I'm going to invite you to sing with me that chorus. My brother Gabriel and I had the opportunity to sing it for her when we visited. As she sang that song and reached the end, she would always proclaim a loud hallelujah at the end of the song. And here is the Bible verse from which it comes from. Revelation 21, 1 to 4. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling is now among his people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. Today we grieve that she's gone to the land where there is no more death. Amen. So there is no mourning or crying or pain there because the old order of things has passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, See, I have made everything new. Everything is new for Aunt Miriam now because she is in the new Jerusalem. So sing with me. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, lift up your voice and sing. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in Oh, yeah. 
for that inheritance. So on my own behalf, on the behalf of the Vice Moderator, Reverend Andrea Anderson of East Preston, as well as all of the clergy and churches of the African United Baptist Association, I extend our condolences and prayers for God's strength and comfort. Uncle Irving, you have done well. You've done an awesome job. I had a chance to see Uncle Irving at work, and what a gift he was to her, caring for her along with the children, Debbie and Doug. Doug, you dug deep to be able to give us that tribute. Thank you. <laughs> so God bless you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much, Reverend. It appears of all these people that have spoken, I'm the only one who has not been able to sing and the new at her best. Not, not, not in a younger age, but I'm getting to know her through what's being said. We we'll invite uh, Janice to come and give her condolences. Sister Janice Bloss. Thank you, Pastor. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. I really didn't want to do this, but Debbie only made me do it because she did it for Linda. <laughs> so I'm here just to help her out. Okay. Okay, um, um, the condolences. Um, Colin Glasgow, I'm sending, I'm sending this, yeah, send, send in. Sincere condolences to Sister Muriel's family, to a special lady who was loved and admired by our family and community at large. Her smile was so warm and made me feel calm when I was in her presence. She was blessed with voice, with a voice that lifted your spirits. May you always know that she was loved and will be missed. Sincerely, Connie Glasgow. Michelle Lee, on behalf of Cherry Brook United Baptist Church Lays Auxiliary, we extend sincere sympathy to the Cromwell's Gross family. May God comfort and bring you peace. Wendy Sparks Wilbur, heaven is so lucky to get another angel, an angel that sings and loves the Lord. Auntie, I will cherish our conversations, our laughter, and most of all, your silent jokes. If only I knew that when I saw you, a few weeks ago was my last time. I would have stayed longer and gave you a few extra hugs. Our memories will forever live in my heart. May you now rest in eternal peace. Elizabeth, Betty, and Donald Thomas. We are sad to hear of the passing of Aunt Muriel. She will be remembered as a kind and loving child of God. We will miss her deeply as we have shared much history. The memories will stay with us and they are fond memories. God bless and keep the family and give you great comfort and wisdom. John Saunders, it was an honor of us to get to know you, Muriel. Thank you for trusting me to help you with your daily care needs. As well as, well as thank you for the great life and smiles you provided me each and every time I seen you. You will forever be Miss XL. That's on Adams Franks. My heartfelt condolences go through to the entire Desmond family as you mourn the loss of your beloved matriarch. May you may you find solace and strength in God's unwavering embrace during the time of sorrow. Let us honor the memory of, of a remarkable black woman like Muriel Desmond, who can great can great could great ah uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever paved the way for better opportunities. May your legacy continue to inspire and uplift us all. Rest, 
peacefully happen, dear Miriam, from the Adams family. Brian Johnson, to the family of the late Muriel Cromwell, on behalf of my wife, Hope, and family, our sincere Christian sympathy on the home going of your loved one. She had a, a blessed voice and touched many hearts when she sang. She will be missed by all those who had the opportunity to know her. Praise God, she has gone to be with her Lord and Savior. May Almighty God strengthen, comfort, heal, and guide you as you go through this period of mourning. Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Annette McLean, Desmond. Mm -hmm. Debbie, Carolyn, Dougie, and families, we are, sadly, we are saddened to hear of Aunt Muriel's passing. I am sorry that I cannot be there to celebrate with you her home and service. I know she had a voice of gold and now joins the choir in the upper room where angels sing. We are sending hugs and prayers your way and thinking of you all during this difficult time. Nieces Annette, Carolyn, Alice, Jesse, and Juanita Desmond. Moncton, Montreal. New Glasgow, Moncton, Moncton Montreal. Reverend Debbie and Hank Simmons, send, them, send in our sympathy, love, and prayers to the family and friends. Cousin Mira will be remembered for her beautiful <coughs> smile and singing voice. May she rest in peace. Thank you, Debbie, for all, Deborah, for all your good care you gave your mom. God bless you, and I'm so glad I'll be able to visit. God bless you and keep you. I am so glad I was able to visit her until we meet again, Shepherd. Second Corinthians 5 8, we are confident I am, I say and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Um, Anthony Riley, I remember good memories of this precious woman who I've come to call Aunt Muriel. Back in my early spiritual journey, I met her and her mom, Mrs. Hannah Gross. She has been a spiritual light in my life. Thank you, Aunt Muriel, for being a wonderful woman of God. Well done, faithful servant. Vicki Samuel Stewart. Condolences from the Samuels, <laughs> Samuel Girls. Dor Dorothy, Rosalind, and Vicki. Muriel was a special person to our family and mother, Mae Jackson. Catherine Gibson, to Deborah, send him my sincere condolences to all the cousins and the entire Cromwell Desmond family. When my aunt, when my aunt Meryl would visit our family mom, Ellen. Well, my lady. Yeah, whatever. Uh, we <laughs> mom told me that I was named that day in Meryl, but I will always admire your mother. Aunt Meryl was always <coughs> fond of loving. She always talked about her children lovingly with her mom. Her infectious smile made you feel happy, and her voice was precious. I am always, I always love to visit. Precious memories will be treasured, Aunt Meryl, in our father's arms. Amen. Rest, in, rest Aunt Meryl, in our father's arms. Amen. Deborah, my thoughts and prayers are with you all. May God wrap his love and arms around you. All given strength and, per and peace in the coming days. Send in love, Cousin Catherine, Skeleton, Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. Nina Adams, Wayne and I pass on our condolences to Irvin, Debbie, Carolyn, and Dougie on the passing of your wife, Mom. Thanks for sharing her with me. I, I'm going to miss my <coughs> weekly Monday afternoon visits with my dear sister in Christ. We would read and study scripture followed by prayer. I met so many of her caregivers and expressed how comfortable she made them feel. We turned our Bible study into a social time after she was unable to read the, the print in the study books. It was a blessing, Miss Muriel, to share. It was, it was a blessing, Miss Muriel, to share time with you. Until we meet again, keep the coffee pot on. Good night. Elder Wayne and Deacon Nana. Please accept our, oh sorry, this is uh, Mary Crowley and family. 
Please accept our family's heartfelt condolences on Mero's passing. Such a beautiful person that I've known for years and had the privilege of living in the same house with in, in our early years. Always a great joy to be around and such a true person. What you seen was what you got from her. And that was simply pure love and that beautiful smile. God bless you all as you reflect back on her blessed life. May you know that God loaned you one of his best earthly angels as your wife, as your wife, your mom, your sister, your grandmother, and your friend. Love said to you all, Muriel will remember you always with a smile. Peace be yours. Beverly Dixon David, <laughs> send a condolences to the family. Your mother was always so happy when we met. I enjoyed her singing and the close relationship she had with her sisters. You always saw them together, family, family the memories you had. Hold and post, you are in my prayers, God bless. Army Reddick. To Deborah, Debbie, no. To Debbie, Carolyn, and Dougie, and your family, my condolences to all of you on the loss of your mother. I remember her mainly as a young mother of small children who opened her home to me, to my late sister, Betty, at the time when, when time when finding living accommodation in Halifax was a daunting experience for people of color. In later years, when visiting Nova Scotia, it was, it was always a pleasure to hear her sing, and now that she has joined the, the angelic choir, it will be more sweeter than ever. Love and blessings from Irene Reddick, London, Ontario. Dorothy Harper. Mm -hmm. To the entire family of Muriel Cromwell, I send my condolences, deepest condolences, a true woman of God, a kind and gentle Christian lady who loved the Lord and Savior. I will always remember the many times we spent together before my move to Toronto. We shared many happy times together. I miss our phone conversations. May the precious memories of your loved one comfort you during this difficult time. R.I.P., my sister, gone but never forgotten. <coughs> Carolyn Thomas. <coughs> Sincere condolences to Irvin, Uncle Irvin, and all the family and many friends of Muriel. She was loved, she said Aunt Muriel, not Miss Muriel, I'm sorry. She was loved and loving and will be dearly missed. Wishing you all God's peace and comfort as you face each new day. Cherish your memories and her presence through the presence of God. He will never leave you, nor he will forsake you. Psalm 121, blessings upon you, Carol and your family. Alexis Gear Glasgow, my sincere condolences to the family and the passing of your mother, grandmother, and sister. Miss Cromo was a very pleasant and sweet lady. I pray that you, the family, will find comfort in your memory. Remember, in the memories you have of her, may she rest in heavenly peace, God bless. Cheryl Whalen. I will always welcome, I was, I was always welcome, and she stated that she was like a mother to me, which was true, she, she couldn't make each other, we could make each other laugh. I look forward to my visits. I was one of her home care workers. She was a great lady with a big heart. She will be missed. Rest in peace, my friend. Tamara Smith. <laughs> Hello, family. My name is Tamara. I worked with Northwood Healthcare. As I stated, coming to see your mom, giving care to her, but mostly I had such a small time knowing her, but knew just as much she, Mrs. Muriel, wanted me to know. Mom, I would call her. She honestly taught me a lot over the times I spent coming to the house, giving her care. And one memory she said to me was, what's your mom's name? So I told her, she looked in my eyes and said, you look just like your mom who raised me. I was shocked, but had joy in my heart because my grandmother, which I took as my mother, had died 17 years ago. It was like Muriel knew my grandmother. To me, it felt so nice knowing that in Muriel, she had seen my grandmother and that she was telling me that she's near. 
and that she's watching over me. Well, Mrs. Muriel, I had a wonderful last <coughs> time getting to know the beautiful woman you were. And until we meet again, rest peaceful in the hand of our Lord, Jesus. I will forever remember your smile. P.S. Debbie and Irvin, thanks for giving me this opportunity to help your wife, Mom, in the last few months. Much appreciated. To <coughs> That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> we knew how the us in here briefly. And uh, Sister Melinda, are you going to sing again? I'm ready. Oh, good. Okay, here we go. Not 
supposed to cry, but I am almost sure there were tears in your eyes as Jesus took your hand and you stood before the Lord. He said, my child, look around you for great is your Thank you so much, Reverend Mutale, the officers and members of Victoria Road Baptist Church, also to our Mariel's family. Mariel was very special, and I can picture her singing those two hymns. <laughs> Gone and fighting. But not only that, I remember the hymn that Aunt Mariel sang. I dreamed of a city, oh, yes. 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 so bright yes. and so fair. Yes. Yes. I remember she sang that at my father's funeral. Yeah. You know, that was 28 years ago. Oh, yeah. It wasn't yesterday. Mm -hmm. Always have fond memories of Aunt Mario. Yes. She was a very loving person, yes. a very kind person person who always gave back, and God blessed her tremendously with such a beautiful, beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. Family. You know, Aunt Mary was in a better place. Um, you know, she was sick the last number of years. I want to say to her sister, Debbie, who came home and took good care of her. And she would say, Mm -hmm. God bless you. She would say thank you to all of her family and Uncle Irvin, mm -hmm. her sisters and her brother, her nieces and her nephews. The thing about Aunt Mario, she loved her family. Mm -hmm. You know, she really loved her family and, you know, um, she was a blessing. Sometimes God only gives us folks for so long. Mm -hmm gave us Aunt Mario for 90 years, 90 good years. So God is good. I want you to remember Aunt Mario and her, the goodness, the things that she did. 
I will certainly remember her voice. Her voice because she blessed so many people. She used the gifts that God gave her to bless. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Aunt Muriel, your mom, your grandmom, great grandmother, sister, friend, wife, is only one step ahead. Amen. She's in a better place today. No more suffering, no more sorrow, no more tears. Yes, we will cry and we'll shed a tear because we will indeed miss her but she's one step ahead of us, and she's gone on for her reward. God is a good God, an amazing God, and we thank him for his goodness. We thank him for the life of our dear Aunt Mary. Thank you all, and may we all take something from her as we go through life, her kindness and her goodness. Bless you all. And family, you have my deepest condolences. May God bless you, and may God sustain you at this time. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Father Trailer. She knew the family were on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just briefly look into God's word at this particular time from the text that Reverend Wanda read. Those of you who have memory will remember, talking about a young man called Stephen. This man is stoned to death. And by that death, two experiences are apparent. One, that dying is painful. But then secondly, death is peaceful. That though dying is painful, actually death itself is peaceful. Mm -hmm. When Stephen slips into the next world, there's no indication that he has pain on the other side. On the contrary, we learn he is at rest in his gown. And so in the course of this brief time, we talk about Sister Muriel being asleep or Sister Muriel, just at rest. More often than not, they say, oh, God rest his soul. She doesn't need that prayer. She's at rest. You know, because she passed on from this life to the next, having believed in a person called Jesus while she trod this earth. So, because rest is important to us all, we often want to have that rest through this thing called sleep. Most of us enjoy saying, ah, I had a good night's rest. We do not toss much in, in our sleep, so we go up, I feel refreshed. <clears throat> and it's good to feel that way. The sleep that Aunt Muriel, Sister Muriel, Mother Muriel, <coughs> wife Muriel to Brother Cromwell has gone in, is the sleep of death that God gives to all of us. When the body gets tired, it enters this sleep. Sleep? Did you say sleep? Yes, I did. You remember the story of Jesus raising this young person from the dead? As he approaches the casket, he says, stop, this girl is not dead but asleep. He's laughed to scorn until he raises that girl from the dead, Amen. proving that he is the master of all. all right. Death, when we die in Jesus, <coughs> is sleep. When we come to Jesus, this painful thing that defeats all of us is defeated. And that's why one of the scriptures does say, oh, death, where is your sleep? Where is your victory? In Jesus, death dies. Who doesn't want that? We all do. Why do I jump to the doctors when I have a pain in my tummy or in my chest? I want to perpetuate this thing called life and escape death as much as possible. We all do. Why do we eat? 
to strengthen our bodies, get a little more life into there, and give a kick to death, a little further, a little more life. It is reported one of the ladies that had money, a lady, a queen of England, was dying and wanted just 10 more minutes of life. And here's what she said. 30,000 pounds for just 10 more minutes of life. Wouldn't you have given her, given her those 10 minutes if you had to get that 30,000? She never got it because life is God given, God sustained, and God created. And this God is telling us a few important matters a few important lessons in the story of Stephen. To those lessons, let us go. First of all, that our sister Muriel, when she closed her eyes to this earth, her eyes opened to a place called heaven. Notice the story that was read, Stephen is dying on earth, but really the real Stephen is out of this world and has entered the courts of glory. Because he says to the Jesus he sees in the open heavens, Lord Jesus, receive yes. my spirit. Yes. Now I'm going to say this. I am confident that the testimonies that are born regarding Sister New, that as she was passing from this earth into the next, she opened her eyes and those courts of glory that were mentioned a little earlier, and she said, Jesus, receive my spirit. Yes. How can we plain human beings be as confident as that? It is as simple as this. We planted our faith in Jesus while we lived on this earth. As two young men you know, found out, soon when their mother was dying, desperate to find out where she was destined to go, the first of our children said to her, Mother, are you sliding into eternity? And she said, no, son, I cannot slide into eternity. I've had my feet planted on the rock for 30 years. And you don't slide when your feet are planted on the rock. The other man, boy said, mother, have you had a glimpse of Jesus? And she said, son, you can have all those glimpses you want. I've had a square book for 30 years. <laughs> You who sit here, could you say what Nero would say? I'm closing my eyes here and opening them up there. Yeah. And I'm looking at him who was crucified on my behalf. Right. There he is the Lord who receives me into his bosom. Yeah. So her eyes are open to what we cannot see. In these fancy days, there are so many people who have spent either 50 years, days or 50 years in hell, and they come to tell it. They can give you all those fancy stories. Mm -hmm. Sister Nero is not talking about your fancy story. She is going to experience him who is real, mm -hmm. because she has gone into his presence. Mm -hmm. All right, her eyes are opened to heaven. But before the eyes are opened to heaven, they were closed to this heaven. Ooh. All of us shall come to that place where we close our eyes to this earth. Mm -hmm. Not so long ago, my wife and I found ourselves by the bedside of a lady that was in pain, who not long later passed on. And uh, when this, this, this precious person was going to be moved from her room where she was being attended to, to the second place, one of her lovers said, I'm going to be here until this, the remains of my precious person is taken where it should be. Another asked, why do you want to do that? He said, I don't want them to mistreat this precious soul. But then the lover said, yeah, that is not quite true. You can say, let them respect the remains. But this person, whether beaten or shouted at, will no longer feel or hear because they've closed their eyes to this earth. They were sensitive to what was going on while their eyes were open. They could see, they could feel, they could realize, but now their eyes are closed. That's gone. What was Sister Nereo open to while she trod the earth? What did she see that was valuable? You know, in talking to members of the family, husband, children, siblings, and so on and so forth, 
one thing that was quite unanimous among all, she was a saint. <laughs> now, I mean, many of us use that term derogatively. You know, you want to, oh, he's a saint. Meaning, okay, they try to be above the others. No, 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 as Sister Lori mentioned at the ladies, ex excellent ladies service last night, Sister Muriel wasn't perfect, but she was this good person who, if it was possible, would have wanted to be perfect. And that's what sainthood is, separating ourselves from what is bad and going on to do what God wants us to do because we are now a people belonging to God. And Sister Muriel demonstrated that in her singing, in her being, in her conduct, greatly. Let's talk about her husband, brother, brother Evan here. They spent, he told me, 30 years together. That's remarkable, isn't it? And just to seal the fact that they had a beautiful life together, uh, Reverend Bill was over here, Deacon Pat over there, and the, the children were at her bedside one of the last <coughs> days. And we just deliberately says to Brother, brother Evan, Brother Evan, how did you meet this lady? And uh, what did she mean to you? And you could see the man glow as he recounted, you know, the story of their being together. And at that point, this ailing lady gave us a laughter that told us she was in the story. <laughs> You've been a good husband, brother Cromwell. Yeah. You should be commended for that. But it also becomes It's also because you had a great wife. <laughs> Sister Debbie, seven years of taking care of your mother. Who does that? Yes. Great lady, well done. Mm -hmm. But as our minister has just reminded us, Sister Mingo would say thank you. Yes. And thank you for those seven years you gave to her. Great work. Very few people do that. So you did, you did what you could to make mother just feel loved and cared for. She who cared for you, you now cared for her. Thank you, baby. You are not to be left out, Sister Caroline. You remember those instances when you came in and said, Sister Debbie, just go away and have some rest. I'll be here for you. Tremendous work. That's what sisters are there for. You know, so for you to come in and give your sister some relief, that is very important. Well done, Sister Caroline. Dad. Those news you gave mother. <laughs> that was tremendous. Even in the last days, dad would take post. I'm going to make his mother better stuff than boosts. And he did. Caring for your mother as you did was tremendous. She who you look back to and say, just as we are just fine, brother Doug, you dug deep and told us how wonderful mother had been to you. Now you come back and say, I can pay it all back. But I can do a little show, Mother, that I appreciate you and I love you. And you did that very well. Yes. Very great well. children, because you had a great mother who was a great teacher to you and a great influence on in society. We can say about Sister Mildred, Sister, while well, you lived, you did well. did well. Now she's no longer alive to these things, but she did them while she was living. And I want to say this, Stephen, that we, we, whose story will recount, was actually talking about the fact that he had lived his own life until the point at which he met a person called Jesus and things changed for him. So instead of following the tradition he had been brought up in, he began to follow this being called Jesus. And from that point on, even though he lived in this world, he only lived in this world to tell people that there is such a thing as being in this world and yet saved for God and to be with God at God's appointed time. I don't know how many of us have that confidence that even though we are on earth, our hearts are captured, we are now taken up to the courts of glory. And when it comes to die like Stephen, we shall see heaven open and the God who created us and then recreated us now will receive us to himself that with him we might live forever. We said Sister Mingo has only slept. Let me just illustrate this and with that we will close. 
A father of nine children was dying and he knew he would not live the next hour. And so he began to say good things to his children and to bless them. He said to the first one, this is it. And at the end of it, he said, son, good night. Have a good night. He went into the second and said the same thing. Up to the eighth person, it was good night eight times. When he came to the ninth child, he said, OK, this is what I wish for you, son, but goodbye. And with those words, he closed his eyes and passed on. The little boy stood still and asked himself, eight good nights, one goodbye? What is my father telling me? And this boy realized the eight said they had put their faith in Jesus. Amen. He had it. And that did it for him. He said, I don't want it. Goodbye. I want good night. Tomorrow, I'll see. Amen. So that particular time, he repented and gave his life over to Jesus. Amen. For some of us who know not Jesus, Muriel is saying goodbye. For those who know Jesus, good night. Which do you want? Goodbye or good night? It depends on what you make of Jesus. Amen. We will sing. What a day that will be. Sister Mary has found it. And they will find it for my death.
Reverend Gibbs come yes. again and pray for us. When I think of Sister Muriel, she would want us to remember her witness of the Lord. Amen. The legacy that she has left of the faithfulness of God. And the one who is faithful to her is the one who will be faithful to us. And so family, friends, we have sadness now. But what we do have is the legacy of Sister Merrill that tells us God is faithful. And as he was faithful to her, he will be faithful to us. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, you are our light, and you are our salvation, and you have been so for Sister Miriam. And Lord God, we ask that as we now end this time together in this place, that you would remind us, God, of the testimony, of the witness, of the love, of the grace that she showed us, that we might remember her with fondness in our hearts, but that we might continue to give you thanks and give you glory for who you are. And Lord God, we ask that you would be with the family, that you would continue to watch over them, that you would care for them and bless them, God. That they would know that they still carry her in, her, in their hearts and that you are the God who watches over them. And we pray, God, that as we leave this place, that we leave knowing that you are our God, that you are the God of Sister Miriam, and that you are the God who will one day also lead us home. We put our trust in you. And so now, Lord, we give you thanks for Sister Miriam. We give you thanks for the blessing she has been. We give you thanks that she is in your care. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our brother and friend. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Mills. And as Reverend Mills was praying <coughs> and reminded us to keep the memory of our Sister Mary that's absolutely important. You know how the Holy Book says, dead being dead still speaks? There it is, Sister Mary will keep on speaking. Those who saw Stephen fall asleep would never forget that brilliant figure that was before them, that shone like an angel, and uh, the brilliant aspects of Sister Mary's life. Put them there to remind us of who she was to us and the good God who gave her to us. Now, the family is grateful you're all here. Grateful, Reverend Tali, Reverend Wonder, Reverend Bills, that you've actually participated in this. The rest of us, family and friends, that you're here. And we're all invited after the internment to uh, rip us at uh, Atlantic Funeral Home 771. Uh, that will follow the internment. But for now, this is what we'll do. We'll, we'll just dispatch ourselves, then we'll let the casket go out first. The clergy will follow them, the family, and the rest of us can come up to that. So let's close with a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord let the light of his face shine upon you. And may the Lord give you his peace.